Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at WordPress.com's latest application that they've launched called Studio. It's build fast, ship faster with Studio. It's a local host way of developing and uh, designing WordPress websites locally on your computer without the need for a hosting account, though you can connect this up to WordPress.com hosting account for sharing the demo sites that you are working on. At the time of my testing, it's capped out at five uh, demo sites that last for a maximum of seven days. So this is something that's very similar to maybe an Insta WP or even WordPress very own playground, which lasts just in that instance, right? That instance that you're designing in. I've covered that in other videos before. Uh, building locally is something that WordPress developers have wrestled with for nearly 20 years. How do we get these local environments so that I can design, develop offline uh, without the required expense of a hosting account, which arguably has gone down uh, across the many years, but also it's just about speed and efficiency and having access to those files locally on your computer and you're not setting up all kinds of uh, access and file control uh, you know, on across the web. So Studio looks to solve that. Uh, here are some highlights from the website developer.com uh, developer.wordpress.com uh, keep building will handle the rest demo sites one click admin open your site anywhere etc etc i'll link this up so you can take a look at it currently only works on Macs with a request early access for windows you can check out this website to learn a little bit more if you want to dive into the docs so i've just downloaded it uh, on this particular computer this is the first screen that you are presented with it's giving yourself a site name that you're going to start with and a local path. Now, remember, the local path is where it's going to store all of those files. So if you've never really dove into developing or designing locally or on a file system with WordPress before, this is going to give you that complete control over that file system of WordPress. So if you need to customize uh, the files and you're working with a code editor locally, you'll be able to find that directly here on your computer. I'm going to hit continue. And I, I haven't changed and This is that as the very first screen that you see when you first boot up um, WordPress Studio. Is it WordPress.com Studio or WordPress Studio? It's WordPress Studio or just Studio. It just says Studio up in the file manager. Um, and this is the very first screen. This It's already running. The website is already running. The demo site is already running. And you can see that by the uh, start stop um, icon at the top right. You have this running uh, instance, a little green light shows that this site is running. That means that it's using up a little bit of memory. It's running in the background and we'll, we can access it locally through a browser, just as if we were browsing to it on the web. You can make a bunch of different sites here. So if you're a freelancer or maybe you're just somebody learning WordPress, learning to use WordPress, learning to develop with WordPress, you can create a bunch of sites, again, with no cost, free locally on your computer. Again, you can kind of do this stuff with playground.wordpress.net uh, or InstaWP or many of the other sort of instant website hosting providers. Uh, but again, this is giving it to you locally on your computer and in an app-like experience, which is something that... I had predicted would we, we would have seen this many years ago, and it started to with a Calypso project, uh, but this is something that is much more refined, much more lightweight and snappy through my testing, again, in the early version of 1.0, uh, but also very heavily branded to WordPress.com and integrated to WordPress. Dot com. So you can see we have some quick action items here, site editor, styles, patterns, pages, templates, navigation, and you can open up in the finder. So this will give you that direct file access. These are all the files for this particular WordPress website. If I wanted to access those and modify those locally, I can. And then you can also pull up uh, the terminal so that you can start uh, right inside of that directory inside the terminal. Uh, it doesn't have WP CLI, not yet anyway. I wonder if that'll be a package that it installs uh, natively in your on your Mac or on your Windows uh, environment so that you can actually run the WP CLI commands in the future. I'd have to look into that. Other uh, option screens that we have, we have the share a demo site. This is what's going to connect up directly to WordPress.com, and I'll show that off in a minute. And you can see that one of the most important pieces here is that the demo sites are deleted seven days after the last update. So this is truly a 
very temporary situation. If you're designing a site for somebody and you want to show it to them and say, hey, take a look at it, you know, you can poke around and see what I've been designing. Uh, this is a great method to do that where you're working with a team of people. Hey, check out the example site that I built. Uh, but remember, they'll get deleted after seven days. Uh, but you can push those updates without having to access any other you know, clunky tools or other plugin. It just pushes it from this app to the WordPress.com uh, hosting account. And I'm sure they're gonna enhance this later on. The obvious prediction here is this is a great way to onboard users into the WordPress.com environment, hosting environment. I'm not all that upset about it. Uh, WP Engine has local hosting tools and development tools. Kinsta has development tools. Uh, other web hosts have tools to develop and design WordPress websites for the fact of growing their uh, customer base. I, I, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. Just know that this is tied to a WordPress.com account. You can't do this on your self-hosted WordPress, not yet anyway. Maybe there'll be an extension for that in the future. And then the specifics, the settings here. Every time you create a new website in the uh, in the app, it's going to change the port number. And that port number is 8881 by default. And as you add more sites, it just goes to 82, 83, uh, and so on. And that's the port you'd be accessing to see the different sites. Okay. So let's just open that site. You can see what it looks like. And it here it is by default. Uh, it's the 2024 theme. Access to the back end is super fast. Uh, accessing all of the screens is nearly instant, uh, as you would expect, uh, being on your local device and running locally to uh, your machine. And it's the same experience as you normally get. And you're in here developing and designing a WordPress site natively uh, on your website or on your computer. There's nothing really else to explain. There's nothing I'm going to show you in the back end. It's just WordPress right here on your computer. Now, if we pull up uh, the studio app again, what I will do is connect this to a wordpress.com account so you can kind of see what that interface looks like. So we'll go ahead and hit approve right here. This will add this demo site to my wordpress.com account and I'll be able to push the changes from the app to the demo site uh, and see this stuff running live on a website. So we'll go ahead and hit add demo site. Uh, all I've done is authenticate to my wordpress.com account. Now this is actually creating that demo site. It's gonna create a temporary URL, very similar again to InstaWP and playground.wordpress.net. Okay, that just takes a minute for it to propagate and to upload to wordpress.com. You can see the temporary URL right here and I can click on this and that'll bring up a uh, example site that I've built locally and now pushed to wordpress.com. It's going to have this persistent banner, uh, which you can close, but I'm sure will pop up every time somebody reloads it with a fresh cookie session, especially if you're sending it to somebody else. Again, sort of that upsell, that connection to wordpress.com for their hosting. And what they're wanting you to do is be able to design, develop locally, feel really comfortable doing that and say, you know what, at the end of the day, might as well just host at wordpress.com with all of the stuff that I built because with their $30 and above plans, they'll be able to uh, maintain the plugins and custom, custom plugins and custom themes that maybe we're building. Okay, so that's it, it just pushes it it right up there and we'll have access to it. If I pull it open the studio one more time, we'll go to um, the site editor. Actually, we'll go and install a new theme, appearance. I'll just activate the 2022 theme that is there by default. Go back to uh, the app, you can see right away it sort of updates that and refreshes that thumbnail so you can kind of see that here, here's the theme that you're running. And then when we go back to share, uh, what we'll do is just one more time, take a look at our demo site. You can see it's still 2024. We'll go back to the app, click on update demo site. It's going to say one more time. Do you want to overwrite this? Do you want to update it? I'm going to say yes. I don't know how long this is going to take. It might take a minute uh, while that's updating. And there it is, uh, the 2022 theme loading here on my demo site. It took a minute for it to refresh. I was refreshing it. Uh, so they must have the caching system set up uh, fairly aggressively and it took a minute or so for it to uh, appear for the new theme, but very easy. Uh, again, I'm not messing around with clunky import export tools. Uh, I'm not accessing anything through uh, SSH or uh, pushing and pulling from GitHub, it just happens all in the account. And we know that this expires in seven days because it's labeled a demo site. I'd imagine in the future, we're gonna be able to integrate this 
fully with our WordPress.com account. So you'd have access to your live, your live sites, your production sites, uh, maybe your staging sites and demo sites. And it might become this, you know, all inclusive hub for, you know, operating your WordPress website on, uh, WordPress.com, which again, if you're living in that environment, I actually have a, a hosted site on WordPress.com uh, so that I can explore that environment and it's it's fine, works fine. I can install plugins, I can install themes just like I could on many of the other hosts uh, that I use across all of my sites. Let's add one more site so you can see the difference. Uh, it kind of just comes up with a new random name. Uh, in this case, it says my bold website, already assigns it in the local file structure. We'll hit add site. We'll create that site and same thing. I could push this off to wordpress.com if I wanted to, but now I have access to both of these right here in the app and I can have two different looking uh, websites all at once. So I can open up, this is the new one with 2024 and this is the one that's hosted up in wordpress.com and then this is the one that runs 2022 locally. So I can start to mix and match the different websites that I'm building. Again, fantastic if you're a freelancer, fantastic if you're learning and you just want to explore doing different things with WordPress without breaking maybe your live site or even signing up for a web hosting account right out of the gate. It gives you a chance to explore WordPress a little bit more. So that's WordPress Studio, Studio, WordPress.com Studio. <laughs> I think it's just WordPress Studio. Uh, there it is, very easy, 1.0. This is version 1.0. I'm sure we'll have some more features uh, and things to play with in the future. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more. We'll talk to you in the next video.